Terramontosa. Yes. Uh, 2018. And this is an interesting wine because it's actually a blend of several different sort of uh, single vineyards. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a blend of our top vineyard sites. Um, but it's a pure Riesling. It's not a yeah. blend of different grapes. It's, no. I'm using the word cuvee quite That's often probably better, better when, I'm, when I'm talking because um, we have so many different vineyards. Yeah. We have 30, no, not 30. That was three years ago. We have 40 hectares of vineyards. Um, and these 40 hectares, they are spread um, in about 170 different plots. Wow. So yeah, it's a lot of tiny pieces, yeah. and each of those vineyard plots, they somehow have they well not somehow they have their own DNA due to that particular place where they are, due the to the soil, the microclimate, yeah, yeah. the age of the vines. So there's so much that really um, influences each vineyard in a very individual way that we want to follow these characters as long as we can. Mm. So we keep every plot as it is, yeah. um, and then we really invest a lot of time in, in blending them. And we already do blends, of course, for the basic wines. So these are yeah. blends of Rue de saint Raunthal and Lorch, and Terra Montosa is now a blend of our Grand Cru vignettes. Yes. Yeah. Which, which ones? Uh. It's uh, in Rüdesheim, Bergrottland, mm. Berggrosseneck and Berg Schlossberg. Mm. So that term Berg before already tells it's Yes, steep. very steep. Yes. Mm, I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> it's very steep. And in <laughs> Rauntal, we have the Nonnenberg. There's also a bag in the word, so a good Which indication as well. We're going to taste uh, next. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. So these four sites, um, they're representing our Grand Cru wines, but mm. they also represent in a, in a very own taste mm. um, the Terra Montosa as well. But is this a common thing in the area that you actually take this sort of Grand Cru vineyards and you, you sort no. of do a cuvee of them? No. So no. How, how, when, did, when did, did this happen and, and why? It was what again is my father, <laughs> the, the crazy, crazy guy. guy. <laughs> 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 no, it was again him. Um, long time ago, again, um, with I think a very, very modern idea. Um, it is, if you compare it to any other classification system, it's a deuxième cru. Yeah. Um, it describes the second best barrels of the best vineyards. And it allows us to do the decision for the very best barrels. Because if we work in steep slopes, mm. and all our Grand Cru sites are steep slopes, mm. it is of course much more work. Everything is more or less hand and feet done. Um, and it's a very, well, we love the work and, and we love to do it, but it's intense. Yeah. Um, and if we have to decide if we keep a barrel of, for example, Berg Schlossberg, um, in the Berg Schlossberg, just to, to get our, our work paid, mm -hmm. or if it's maybe not like the outstanding barrel and we would love to, to do a very pure Berg Schlossberg and keep that barrel aside, yeah. it would be very hard for us to declassify it to a Sauvage. So we need something that expresses the steep slopes, but not the particular vineyard side. Oh. So it's about slate and quartz, and um, I think that expresses the wine yeah. quite nicely. Let's taste it. I mean, oh yeah. It's, we opened these bottles uh, maybe one and a half an hour ago, mm -hmm. something like that, and it's actually already happened quite a lot. Yeah, and I'm very happy when we just pre-tasted it, we used a bit smaller glass. Yeah, we used and the I'm glasses. I'm very happy that yeah. we have the tiny bit yeah. like wider ones now. That's, um, well, I was originally hoping for champagne, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's also okay with that one in the glass. <laughs> this is um, quite amazing combination of um, because it's a little bit more um, you, you can feel the fruit of course I mean sort of the yellow mm -hmm. fruit this is a very very nice I mean the acidity and in the and, the, and the sort of the razor sharp uh, mouth feel to it it's very uh, easy. And, and this is still young, this is 18. Yeah, but I think what exactly what you're describing also um, describes the terroir for sure yeah. the intensity due to that very, very warm sun. Yeah. The steep slopes are all south facing, so they really gather whatever they can. And um, the soil, of course, brings it up as well. But also 18 was a little bit smoother in mm -hmm. its structure. Mm -hmm. And the wines open up a little bit earlier compared mm -hmm. to the 19 ones. OK, that's interesting. This one is, is still in the uh, ordering assortment, I yes. think. Yeah, yeah. Correct. But what, the, what, what does uh, Terra Montosa mean, by the way? 
it's a Latin term this time. Mm. Um, my father was multilingual. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tara is the earth and Montosa the mountain. So it describes where it comes from. Yeah. Um, but it's also an historical term. It's not like a like a name of a site. Um, a like a like a concrete name, but it's um it's a term that was used already about a thousand years ago when the first um, plantings of vines were documented, okay, and uh, okay. in those times uh, Latin was the um, language they used for these kind of documents. So ah. the Terra Montosa of Rüdesheim was uh, I think it was precisely 1074 planted with vines um, officially. I get it. It's uh, <laughs> interesting. Um, this is quite an interesting question from, I think this is from Magnus. Uh, it, it's, it's about the shape. The shape of the Riesling bottle is slightly thinner than other bottles. Is, is it with intention of emphasizing taste or is it just a trademark? I think, I mean, he, he means that it, they are quite... Compared so to we, the Burgundy yeah, bottles that are a little quite bit... Thin. These are quite thin and That's slim. a very good question I have no answer to. No. Sorry. <laughs> just leave that. <laughs> um, no, well, very often there's actually a practical reason behind it. Yeah. Um, this is our experience when it, for example, comes to barrel shape. Yeah. Um, we have egg-shaped barrels because then we can use the height of our cellars best. It's not yeah, that they yeah. have like a special dynamic touch um, to the wine. Um, and I would guess that with the bottle it is quite similar. But um, I will bring the answer next time. We, can, sure. uh, we can check it out uh, afterwards. Yes. Um, <laughs> But also, uh, when, when it comes to more winemaking, because the, the, the first one, uh, f first two ones were uh, stainless. Yes. Uh, do you bring oak to this wine? Hundred percent. Okay. But old. Yeah. Old, old barrels. Yeah. Um, but both when it comes to to um, in the winemaking, also uh, both in when in in the making process mm -hmm. and and the maturing. maturing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're not really shifting wines in our cellar. No? Once they arrived in their home, they stay oh. where they are. So after um, after the, all the vineyard experience, we want to calm everything down in the wines. Um, and the Terramontosa ferments and ages in big old barrels, mm. um, German oak. And uh, as I said, they're egg shape in yeah. our region traditionally. Um, the standard size is 1,200 liters. So it's, um, it's quite big barrel. And uh, we use them as long as we can. And we not really use them for these quality of wine in a very young stage because we don't really want any oak influence. But after one or two years, we have the feeling that the oak is balanced out mm. and then we start to put the really nice stuff in it. Mm.